Because really, the, the big thing that I noticed with all of this shit that's going on, especially with, uh, I said, we got Monica with her hot girl summer picture. You, you know mean what I'm the saying? the original city girl? With the, oh, but in her original Good. city girl picture. You know what I'm saying? And in the simple fact, we got C Murder there too. Ain't he like 10 years older than her? I just realized that. They have a significant age gap. I mean, because just look at him in that picture and look at her in the picture. It's like she looked fresh out of high school. Like, in one day out. Yeah, he looked like... <laughs> he looked like my age. Well, like, <laughs> like, it's going down. We fucking about to go get a mortgage and shit. <laughs> uh, but, no. It's the, the simple fact that he is getting... Uh, didn't Monica... Recently get divorced. Isn't her divorce rather recent? I don't think it's that recent. I don't want to know. I got to find out. If Monica I'm not... Divorce. When did she get divorced? Look, that's wild. She's the Monica, by the way. Divorces Shannon Brown. 2019. Oh. Damn, I thought she was still with Rocco. 2019, bro. So guess what? Look, you way out the loop. You thought she was still with Rocco and shit. But no, hey. So with that being said, is so it safe to say? What? Go ahead. Cause you see where I'm going now. Cause last year she gets a divorce from her husband. This year, Kim K says she getting C murder out. And did she set herself up to run straight the motherfucking C murder nigga after 20 years? She is the original city girl. She has transcended Ooh. love with city girling, nigga. All that junk city girls be talking Bro, about Monica that, been doing it. That is the definition. <laughs> she been doing it to an immaculate level. Dog, that's the definition, bro, of fucking city girling is holding your nigga down, running your career like you're supposed to until this nigga gets out, nigga. Anybody that you was with, drop them niggas. I'm coming home, baby. I already yeah. know how the phone call went. Nigga, yeah, she did it. Ex-basketball player, who gives a fuck? Shit, Brown. Anyway. Come Dang, Shannon Brown. Yeah, man. It's serious stuff. I ain't heard about that boy since the New York Knicks. You know, he was born. <coughs> no, he wasn't. You know? <coughs> he was in the, well, well, definition of balling was he was in the league. <laughs> Let me say that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, she caught her one. Whatever. Man, Monica, the city girl. <laughs> Monica, though. She is the Monica. Like, that's hard. For anybody to just take they Like, Corday just changed this fucking shit to, from YBN Corday. I see that coming. Me too. But he's the Corday now. Like, after kids are being born, they're going to be like, yo, you were named after the rapper. It's going to be <laughs> him. So, if your name Monica is not Lewinsky. It's Period. Monica. No. You definitely not Monica Lewinsky. It was definitely the singer in my <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, come on. But with that being said, she man, better drop some fire too, dog. Because every time Monica do, because she don't come out like that, but when she do come out, she drops some fire. Nigga, Monica C Murder duet album, first joint, nigga, coming out. <laughs> nigga, let's go. Nigga, that's your first prediction. You heard it here from your boy Focus. And what's your name, man? The Lovely Bones. And this is The, the Wake and Bake Podcast, nigga. Now, I was going to say something else. But he continued it with me, and I'm so thankful for that. You know what I'm saying? So, actually, actually, I want to do something because every single episode, I've been trying to get that nigga to say that shit with me at the end, and he don't never say it. He never Come on, it. man. It's repetition. It's repetition, man. True. Very true, man. So, I'm so happy with that being said, dog. Uh, it's a lot going on, but it's not. You know what I'm saying? We got no music. COVID. We got... I love new music. Uh, you know, we got a lot of things, you know, and I think one of the first things that we could talk about, uh, I think it's going to be great to talk about Lil Wayne. Now, Lil Wayne literally just said, yo, No Ceilings, Part 3, Carter 6, On The Way, on ESPN. Which show was that? First Take. He was on First Take. He's always on First Take. Yeah. Should have known that. But what do you think about this? What do you say right here? What is, what's, how do you feel? Uh, I want to hear No Sunless 3. I don't want to hear the Carter 6. Oh, I think that's like unanimous across the board. Mm -hmm. Like most people that I've spoken to about this shit feel like that. Like, we want like, something else, bro. <laughs> we, want, we want something else, man. Yeah, man. You could have you kept going with the funeral thing. Like, you yeah. could have kept trying new stuff. Yeah. Like, and find funeral one. Funeral like, Give us funeral two. Or yeah. Something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Because funeral was actually kind of okay. You know what I'm you saying? Know what I'm saying? I definitely appreciated it. Holly Kyle, Kyle <laughs> Girl 2. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, uh, give us something else, but you can you should leave the Carter series alone, man. We know it's your cash cow. 
is what you was, you know, you like a lot of your shit on, but it's time to let go, man. We know you missed out on a lot of the dollars that it generated as well. Uh, so I'm definitely excited though to hear about the No Ceilings three and what this kind of bring me to uh, a general discussion that I kind of was seeing on on Twitter not too long ago with um with the sayings that that maybe Birdman owes Little Wayne a lot more than what Little Wayne just been getting like honestly. Universal owes Lil Wayne like a lot of fucking money. Nah, you I don't. I don't know Lil Wayne or Birdman, so I can't speak on what they go through because they family. So. No, I'm talking about no, I'm hip. I'm hip. I'm hip. But I just want to put that disclaimer out there. They of family, course. so you never want to get into family business. Of course. <clears throat> However, from my understanding, it looked like Baby was like, "All right, I can understand why you mad, but I'm not about to give you the money. Universal gonna give you the money. You know what I'm saying? I'm not getting. Of course. Get it from them. Of course. And so. I don't know, man. I'm glad they got through it, man. For real. Because that, Can we get Black Father like Son too, bro? I like to hear that. I don't want that shit. Don't nobody want another Birdman verse. Birdman don't want to do another Birdman verse. He knows it's pointless. They said it on his podcast, though. Exactly my point. He don't need to do it. <laughs> he needs to tell Wayne, no. No, like Father, like Son too, nigga. We not doing that. Nigga, I'm going to just be your father. <laughs> That's it. Like, But I do think the entire rap game owes... Anybody that's been through the pipelines, which is Universal Music, owes Lil Wayne. Because Cash Money and No Limit funded them. Think about that. Cash Money and Little and fucking No Limit funded Universal because how much money do you think they made them? How much money do you think cash money from the start to the now has made Universal? Ten million dollars? You are tripping if you're not saying billions. I said billions. Oh, okay. I thought you said if I, 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 I didn't I mean you said to say millions. millions. No, no, billion, man. Yes. Yes, dog. Billions. They had to have made billions of dollars for them companies. Just them. You know I'm what good. I'm saying? So I know No Limit definitely did. For sure. Just in a matter of a few years, they probably cleared that. But let's play a hypothetical real quick. What if it wasn't Wayne? What if instead of it being Wayne, the biggest artist, we got somebody like it was BG? Ooh. And it could have been. My thing is it everybody been was all so of them. stuck in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody was so stuck in the streets. And so maybe what if Lil Wayne, that's a great question. What if Lil Wayne wasn't the one? What if he wasn't the child? That would be a great world to see. And you know, they had their chips all on, on Juvie. You know, and he was the original. Jizzle too, because Jizzle was booming. You right. know what I'm saying? That'd be I don't remember. I just don't know what the period was where it was that that transition of power. Like maybe when it was like when when well, Juvenile what? felt out he was getting fucked. No, you talking about when Wayne came to it was No, like just when like when Juvie just kind of started falling off, like we just kind of didn't appreciate his music like that anymore. I, I mean, I don't understand because that was like, because I'm sorry, let me see, I'm gonna think of the last hot album Juvenile had. Juvie the Great, nigga. Was that with Rodeo? Or or no, no, no. The, the, I think that was the one after that. So the, I'm about to bounce back. Bounce, bounce the bounce. bounce back. Okay, that and, was that and album, the UTP, that album even the UTP was, album was good. was kind of cool. Yeah, so. So and I think say, that, that so sweet, it might have been then. It might have been in the DTP when they were doing. I mean the UTP, UTP, yeah, UTP. when they were um doing that transition. It might have been that period where it was just like, eh, maybe his boys was helping him the whole time, and they wanted to stop helping him. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Right. Like, I think that a lot of the time, like people don't they. That's the conversation right now. Even with the you know people finding out the Saha had writer credits, which is writer credits, which means it's not a ghost writer. And and, and if you want to go back to BG, BG was hot until uh, he got incarcerated. Like right. he got with Ti, he had his group. They was coming out with hits on they own the corner away from Cashway. So yep. it's like, what if it was somebody else? Yeah, what man. what if Turk, the weakest nigga, did the Little Wayne Metamorphosis? We have man the landscape of music. Niggas, nobody would believe it. Gilly the Kid would have came like, yo, it was me. And we would have believed him. We're like, we knew it. We fucking knew it, dog. There's no way that nigga was writing that shit like that nigga. And then, like, what? 
I got four holes in all the holes in the back red. I got no nobody remember his part or none. They was just there. Yeah, I think I, I was only uh, geeked on Turk because I had his CD too. But it was everybody only bought them. But it was like it was because you was a part of it. You were saw the hot thing boys. Is you had to have all of their shit. Yeah. Like, it was a, like a collective. Like if you had all the fucking no limit tapes that came out that year, those years that no, because it was like over like a year and a half. So then it just dropped. No, it was like two years. You talking about no limit? It was like two years. Them niggas dropped like every month for like two years or some shit. Like 36 months. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, and that's how they made so much money and all the records went platinum. You know You're what I'm saying? You're talking about No Limit, right? Yeah, No Limit. first we were talking about Cash Money. Right, right. No, no limit. limit, I know a thing too. They had like a year where like Every month they had a number one or some shit, some bullshit yeah, like no, that. It was a new release. That yeah. was a new release. Like, so, you know, but uh, I really do feel like a lot of the get that would have been a great thing, though. I appreciate you asking that question. That would have been something to fucking see. Like, if BG didn't go to jail and he did realize that he was in a position, you know what I'm saying, and got clean and all that good stuff, you know what I'm saying, to really. Or what if what if he would have got clean though and not been the same person? You know and that would have changed the music. But then again, even if you think back, even on some of the covers and stuff, Turk went there and Turk was missing. So yeah. like you said, man, that just could be wild, yeah, bro. Yeah, for real, man. Everybody uh, future sound like BG. He don't sound like Wayne. He sound like BG. Right though, like everybody sound like BG. They got the slow drug flow. You know what I'm saying? Like that was a thing. You know, I'm whipping on there. <laughs> Shout out to Jizzle, man. Shout out to motherfucking Jizzle. And with that being said, man, we do have. A video being released. CLB? GLB? What the fuck ever? Alright, man, look. Long story short, man. Music review. We gonna just do the whole song in general. We never got a chance to get to the song in the last episode, episode 12. So... Episode 13. Here you go. This is episode 13. I got to start saying this is what the episode number is at the beginning, too. Okay. Um, But, yeah, episode 13. And what do you think of this song overall, man? Go ahead, give it to me. This song fire, bro. <laughs> he put Dirk on it, too. And I'm not, like, I'm not a person that sold on Drake for, I mean, on Dirk for real. Mm -hmm. Like, he cool, I understand, like, the whole Chirac and all that all and right. drill movement. But I... And I know his background, but I'm not necessarily sold on Dirk. Right. But putting him on there, that shit is fire. <laughs> nigga, Dirk deserve to be there, nigga. That shit is fire. The song is fire. Uh, I get it like a sense of like that, like that black album feel, bro. Like hmm. Hmm. just like legendary. You know what I'm saying? Like it was like you feel like this is like a big record. It's like big, yeah, like feeling and sounding. Yeah, you know like it's not necessarily just this commercial pop pit. It's just like yo, this is a big ass song. Bro. And and I think in in conjunction with the video, um, it was a real cool release. Like it gives you a a real. It gives you a commercial feel. Like, this just felt like a fucking Nike commercial. And I guess that kind of made it cool to an extent. Like, I heard a lot of other different takes about that. But I think that was kind of cool, man. It's like, you don't get the chance to, like, get bodied by your fucking idols in the, in the game of the sports that you can't play well. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that was awesome. Like, I would have definitely came up with an idea like that. Like... What can I do? And I got you two superstar niggas around here. Three, because Marshawn Lynch was in it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I got you niggas in this motherfucker, and I need to make a video, dog. What you, what y'all, y'all down to be in it? No, not y'all down to be <laughs> in it. We need, we need these exact people because they play along with the whole. They kind of like similar to Drake, and they sport, I guess. But they are Nike boys, is my point too. They are. So that's my thing. Like they probably was just at Nike. Like, yo, what y'all doing tomorrow? <laughs> y'all trying to? Cause I got a video, and if y'all down to be in it, the concept written. <laughs> yeah, but they said you can't do video. We could have done Nike, any bro. fucking. He, he, just the fact that he got the video at Nike, bro. No, the video at Nike automatically <laughs> symbolizes this is probably an indie album, and that's the bigger discussion here. Not only <laughs> is the song pretty great, 
Because <coughs> I was in it. And I was, I, I definitely think it's a bop. The first time I heard it, I was like, it's cool. Second time, I'm like, all right. Third time, I was in the whip outdoors. And I'm like, yeah. So, I'm in. I'm sold. And it's crazy. You know, he keep hitting. And, and Dirk feature was cool. I feel just like you. I was not really a fan of the guy, but this was a cool placement for him. Um, I just wonder what the conversation was like to get this. Like, yo, what are you doing? And that play, because it's like Drake get on... Uh, Drake get on everybody's song. Mm. But he, you ain't getting on Drake's song, bro. And if you do, you're usually like a newer artist, which Dirk kind of isn't. Nah, not even newer. Because think, what newer artist has Drake put on his album? Kendrick, uh... Right, and not, even on, and not even on his album, right? I'm not even thinking about his album. Yeah, that's what about, I'm saying. Because I'm thinking about featuring in general. Like, it just seemed like... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He get on everybody's song, but... Right. You ain't getting on he don't get on everybody's song though. Like he's he was was and still kind of is rare selecting with the people he featuring with. Like and if he does feature, he got with a song with Black Boy JB, bro. That's my point. <laughs> that was his breakout single. You see what I'm saying? Like technically, if you want to be the technical, Migos' first single was Versace. It was. You see what I'm saying? So that's kind of what I mean. Like he really selective. Wait, this is gonna be a smash, nigga. It's gonna be a smash. He knows. You know what I'm saying? Whenever he goes to the artist, I'm about to give you a smash. What are you and hopefully he gets something in return for that. I don't know. It could be a good or bad thing <laughs> with somebody that big on your song, regardless of who it is. True. It could be a good or bad thing. Very true, man. It always is a gift and a curse when it comes down to the to the superstardom of a Drake saying, Here you go, the start of your career. Good luck without me, motherfucker. Like, <laughs> after this, it's like, holy shit. I got to live up to a Drake feature. That's tough fucking feet. I want to see how this whole thing goes on. Let's wait for the next single. I'm definitely hyped for the next single, even right after the fact that Darkland demos came out. You know what I'm saying? Which was not really anything, but it was, it was like feet in the streets. Same year. You know what I'm saying? This is pretty cool, man. Shout out to Drake. And man. how he adjusting to the new climate, too. Most certainly, bro. Like, he's really been doing his thing out here. So, I definitely want to give a big salute. And then we're going to also talk a little bit about, a little bit, a little bit, for my hip-hop purists, guys. We're going to try not to last too long over here on this topic. I think people tune out when we get too hip hop shit. So, we got to kind of space it. And No ID sells his entire 273-song musical fucking catalog, Speaking man. Speaking of not hip-hop. I mean, I <laughs> I'll talk that shit, bro. I'll talk that shit. Obviously. But, dog, with all this talk of ownership in the industry, reading from hip hop, hot, hot new hip hop, uh, it's hard to imagine an artist willing part, uh, willingly parting ways with their entire musical catalog. That is, until the bags get big enough. Evidently, no ID just showed us that. Got music with Jay Z. Kanye West, Logic, Rihanna, Ed Sheeran, Big Drake, Shine. Big Shine, so many names you probably wouldn't know. And these are just the most would. recent people. I guarantee it. Uh, we can go into a bag where it's like you wouldn't believe it. You know what I'm saying? Some of the shit the nigga has done. You know what I'm saying? And so it, to hear that he actually went through um, and uh, he has a deal with uh, hypnosis spelled with an H I P. With the G there, that's okay. I see what they did. I guess it's like nobody's thought of that. That's pretty good idea. That's hard. That's actually pretty hard. Hypnosis has acquired the worldwide copyrights and publishing royalties to No ID's entire catalog. Like just like that, you already the producer nine times out of ten, nigga. So you gonna get half. <laughs> Them niggas just got half. Of a Jay Z catalog of a lot of shit, like holy! I just shit, watch wonder, the throne, nigga. I don't want a pocket watch, dog. But what kind of deal is this like? Like, do you go? I'm done with music. Is nah, that what you say? It's just you can sell different catalogs. You just start a different catalog. I mean, I get that, but it's kind of like a big leap like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, but him. like, cause I know the first when I first started, like take notice to this type of stuff is when the dream started talking about it. Right. And he was like, yeah, I sold a catalog. 
That's you know what I'm saying? It's like, so when do you, like you said, when do you reach that point? Like, all right, I got this big catalog, but do I want to sell it all? The bag big enough, but I could just sell Watch the Throne and Blueprint 3. Yeah, I know, but this was his entire catalog, bro. He said Hold it. on. Wait, well, I want to finish, though. So, like, if you are getting to that point, it's like, I want to take it to the next level. I want to leave that behind and become, you know, it's growth. You know what I mean? Fair enough. But if it was me, I'm done. Mailbox money. <laughs> Period. Done. You know what I'm saying? We got the big bag. We out of here. You know what I'm saying? Desert. I, I mean, some island somewhere, nigga. We about to make it. And it's going to have stores and everything, nigga. And it's just going to be me and my fucking family, nigga. That's it. You know what I'm saying, nigga? This is our shit. But that's the kind of thing I'd be doing at this point in my life, man. He's done it all, bro. Like, everything musically, so... If you do decide to motherfucking um, Shut up, retire, man. dog, I want to give you a round of applause, man. Round of applause. Big deals. Big deals. Big money, man. Can't wait till we have a catalog as extensive that we can go. You know what, man? Is you down, man? Because, you know, <laughs> I'm down for that one if you're ready to get rid of it. But I do want to kind of cut into it. Uh, I kind of briefly want to go over some... Just a little bit of things that I've been watching. One of those things is that uh, Project Power movie that came out on Netflix, dog. The shit is off the chain. For the most part, they got these little pills. They give them powers. The shit is off the chain. <laughs> Wait, say that again? That's the whole movie. They got pills. They give them powers. They can go. <laughs> and they got Jamie Foxx. Uh, I can't think of who else was in it. I can't think of who else was in it. But it was another heavy hitter or two in there. You know what I'm saying? So it was a really cool concept. Something dope to see. Uh, funny in places. I thought it was going to be a stereotypical, but it didn't. So I was really happy with that. Just because of who the co-star was to Jamie Foxx. It's a kid. You know what I'm saying? So you go, what the fuck they going to have a kid doing? You know? And you know, Even though it's justifiable. Eh. Anyway, it was a good movie. Uh, definitely worth the watch if you haven't seen it already. Patreon, if y'all ain't seen that, go check it out. This is not an ad. Also, I did want to bring up the fact that the last Airbender creators exit Netflix's live action adaptation out. I don't know if this was just going to be a movie or a show, so we can read just a little bit of it from Yahoo Entertainment. Uh, the creators of Nickelodeon's classic Avatar, The Last Airbender, have exited Netflix's upcoming live-action adaptation. Uh, Demar Dem 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 Demartino, Demartino announced the news Wednesday morning in an open letter on his website, which can be read there. Um, so it looked like they were creating the series. Netflix said that it was committed to honoring our vision for the retelling and supporting us on creating the series. Okay, wow. So they were creating the entire series over there at Netflix, but it looks like something went wrong. I want to try to kind of go a little ahead. Man, look, that movie was trash, bro. The movie it was, was super, trash. It was super the duper. Movie was not oh, trash. It was okay. That shit was garbage. It was okay. It wasn't what we expected. That shit was trash. The animation was garbage. You didn't like the, the show? Yes, I love the show. Oh, love it! Oh, you talking about the animation of the movie? The movie, okay. right? The live movie. Right. The live when, I said, movie. when I heard you say animation, I thought you were saying like the show. Okay. No, the animation. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the do you call it anime? One of the best ones ever. You know right? What I'm yeah. The, the, the TV show. Mm, yeah. The original TV show was awesome. The movie, yeah. garbage, booty. I would never play that shit again. I'm, I'm I want that two hours back. But once again, bro, you cannot hold accountable. What the original creators didn't have nothing to do with. So that's why this is such a big deal to the fans that's out there right now. While we talking about it right here on motherfucking What the Bank podcast, nigga. They wanted to see this shit. I was even I interested see in it. seeing this show in live action done by the real people. The show in its entirety. Like, the shit was going to be like Game of Thrones level huge. You know what I'm saying? Like, this was going to be like the next biggest thing to hit fucking streaming. And I was so excited for it, but it's not going to be four it. books to that shit would be wild. Come I want to see Toft. I want to see everybody in fucking action, nigga, in a actual land. 
visually, like just imagine how amazing the shit looks. You know what I'm saying? Like they got they probably hooking that shit up, probably put the big money behind it and they fucked up the bag. I just wonder what they did. Woman with the whack, teach me how to water beer. Hey man, them hey, that was a good one. That's a really good one, cause them is just water benders for show, man. Shit. She had a water beer. <laughs> That's hard, Paul. But anyway, man, uh, I thought that was something real cool to talk about real briefly, man. Um, with the things that's going on, the things I'm watching. Uh, I'm watching a lot of thrillers. I don't know what it is. Kind of how they take this version of like a horror story and kind of put you on the edge of your seat and you always just so anticipating the what comes next the way that they just leave you on the edge of your seat has always been so intriguing to me and I've been trying to just like map out like what the fuck are these niggas doing every single time because it seems like every person do it you know what I'm saying like right. every movie is kind of the same like they all got the same little boom 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 at this point nigga Pop you should be movies. doing this Pop no, culture references. Period. I mean, not even just pop culture references. No, but what I mean by that is like movie pop. You know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. Now I'm with you. And so, that like, shit is... Mm-hmm. Like the nigga next door being a killer. Pop right. culture reference, bro. There you go. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. I, I think it might be called something else, but we I on the right page. <laughs> we on the right page. But no, that's a... It's, it's called a... Um, it's a trope. Okay. I think you're trying to say a trope. But yeah, but that's that's kind of how it goes. And so I'd be like, damn, what the fuck? So when I come across a good movie that maybe nobody's seen, maybe it might be new, maybe it might be old, it might have just came to one of the streaming platforms, maybe I'll bring it up, you know, see if the listeners would want to check that motherfucker out, man. So let's go back to hip-hop news, though, man. Now, we knew certain... First off, I want to start off by saying rest in peace to Jam Master J from... Run DMC and Jam Master J because that's technically their names. Technically, you know what I'm saying. Uh, but one of the last great DJs, man, uh, that really took hip hop and was literally one of the last DJs that was associated with an actual rap group. You know what I'm saying? In an era where rapper DJs didn't exist. You know what I'm saying? Like. Uh, Cause when he passed, two thousand two. So Joe is it? Yeah, uh, two thousand two. He was murdered in two thousand two in August seventeenth. So we doing this just a few days after that, and you know what I'm saying? Like it's that was an era where the, the you know they just weren't relevant at all, but we still were so close to Run DMC. You know what I'm saying? Years, man, you got to. Of course, no, they were still on. I mean, that was the era where. You know, Russell Simmons was kind of running everything, and we would kind of see run next to Russell Simmons, you know what I'm saying? Right. And so it was kind of, you know, they were still close. And so the relevancy of these guys were so amazing. And we're not just talking about him because, you know, this a few days ago he passed. Uh, his killers were recently captured um, after 18 years. After 18 years. Just imagine being a family dog, and for 18 years, you don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just don't know. I can feel for that family, bro. You know, like, it's it's kind of wild, man. So I definitely want to congratulate uh, the family on being able to get some justice uh, for a change. But at the same time, a lot of details have been uh, being revealed. Um... But I guess I could just go ahead and dive right in. Uh, uh, we're at Hip Hop DX right now, uh, just so you can get the reference of who I'm give, giving you this from. Uh, JMJ was killed after a deal reportedly worth $1.7 million went south. Uh, ACB7 News reports the late hip hop pioneer was planning to exclude Washington exclude Washington from the large multi-state drug deal. So Washington and Jordan conspired to carry out the murder. Jam Master J was ultimately shot and killed inside his Jamaica Queens recording studio on October 30th, 2002. And so yeah, the the news was, you know, the police did figure it was somebody close to him. They just didn't know how close. Couldn't find out. 
it was some of his closest homies, you know what I'm saying? So it's usually how it works, seven times out of ten. Yeah, man, the money, the money, you know, people put that importance on that. And I think that's the evil part of money. Yeah, and like you literally can be sitting with any one of your friends, bro. Any one of your friends, yeah. anybody. Y'all can just be sitting there chilling. Put one thousand dollars on the t- just on the table. Just sit it there. And walk away. You know what I'm saying? No, yeah. don't even no, don't walk away. Don't walk away. Sit there, y'all. Just kick it. Watch y'all niggas start acting. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now put ten thousand dollars and ain't and not, these ain't even really a lot of money, but you see how people just start to act, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. And it, it, it just be sitting there. I mean, niggas get the acting. And then that's the thing too, though. Like the amount of money that. You, it uh, is a lot to you. Always is going to be a variable of what kind of money have you saw and what do you know as a lot of because some people they point of reference is so, um, you know, my brother brought home three brand bands one day. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that's the most money I ever seen at one time besides on the internet. You know and. Then that, that it seemed like that kind of mindset is like it shapes somebody to want saying. to see that more often. Like they hold so much value in this little three grand. Like it's you know if it don't cost three grand, it's not worth anything now. Now that you've gotten three thousand dollars cash in your hand, like right. so it's like certain things kind of shift the perspective once you've seen them. And I think that with money too, like how you were saying, like. It's not that much when you set it on the table, but you know how they react will change. You know, yeah. and that's part of it. You know, perception of it. If they kind of are used to seeing that kind of money just laying around or whatever, you know, some some families motherfucking was wow, like wow. You know what I'm saying? All through every fucking hood. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> they've seen so fucking much and grew up so fast because of it, though. And that's kind of yeah, like how you end up here, like how we grew up and shit, like seeing pounds on the table. You walk in, you ate, you see pounds on the table. Hey, Dad, what's going on? I'm going to do homework. You know that joke is nothing to you. Like, so mad we, we like, <laughs> it, but you know not to go near it. Really? You know not to touch it. And all this, that, 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 you know what I'm you saying. Know what I'm saying? And then when you it. get 18, it's like an mm-hmm. ounce. <laughs> right, you you scared you're gonna get robbed for that. <laughs> Nigga, take your dumb ass home, man. Give me a new game. Somebody go do taxes, nigga. <laughs> For real. <laughs> so, yeah, man. Uh, once again, man. Rest in peace to Jam Master J, man. We are so glad they found his killers. Uh, and this case could be closed finally after 18 motherfucking years, bro. Now, uh, I'm aware that you, I think you had something that you wanted to say uh, regarding relationships like uh how oh uh and let's put the disclaimer out there this, this never happened between oh, okay between of friends. course of course hey so, like, disclaimer disclaimer yeah so, when you brought the topic to me I'm like that's cool immediately yeah so like how do you cause I know niggas who do this dog so you fucking with a chick right mm-hmm. so y'all stop fucking around now, you done brought around your friends, all that. You know what I'm saying? She cool. One of those chicks. Then one of your friends start kicking it with her, and she come around. How do you get away from that awkwardness? And I know it's going to be, it depends on the extent of y'all relationship. Because that is a thing, but how do you, like, hey, what's up? What's going on? <laughs> no, you can't just drop in. You can't drop in one day with my old shorty. Nigga. You know what I'm saying? You can't do that. <laughs> don't do that. So, hey, rule number one, don't just pop up with my old thing, nigga. Don't do that. Don't do that. I need to know about this. Mm. Like, so, let me know. I'm the type of guy where if you just tell me, like, yo, I know you was hitting that thing before you got to bump into I don't want you to bump into going to the same room with her and feel awkward until I feel like we probably going to be in the same room. You That's know, not really nobody's business. Man, rule number one, you know what you want is not to go after, bro. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so, but my thing is, it was it your girlfriend or was it just somebody that they was fucking with heavy? Like, if you, one of the girls don't fuck with, you decide to date them. All right, bro. Do your thing. Right. Like, that's my thing. Like, I don't care. 
Back no, the girl the I was about to propose to. You know I bought the ring. You just pop up there with it. There you go. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm with you 100%. I can't even get on the opposite end of that, dog. That's some <laughs> sucker shit. I can't because I can't I can't play devil's advocate here, man. I'm sorry. Nigga. Hey, I, I hope you yeah. wouldn't expect me to. <laughs> you are looking like little fish. You pop up my baby mama. Nigga, are you about right. your right. fucking no, no, no. I'm I about to never be little fish you, ass. nigga. I will never little fish you. <laughs> Ever, nigga. What? I know you're going to do the unbothered shit on me, too. You passive-aggressive like that and shit, nigga. You fuck around, pull a nigga chair out when you try to sit down. So <laughs> Period. What the fuck is you doing, nigga? <laughs> Suck a nigga. <laughs> so, I'm, uh, I'm anti that. Pull out the chair, though. Like, I... <laughs> oh, what happened? Right, nigga. You all right? <laughs> like, nigga, no. <laughs> but, nigga, that's... but that's life, though. You definitely should... Let it be known. I don't. Once again, I don't feel like like if you're just fucking her and y'all just doing whatever we were just doing. You know what I'm saying? Cool. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't have to tell me until we think we're gonna be in the same room. I got. I can't be surprised by that information. You know what I'm saying? So please give me the heads up. You see my car parked right, outside. Another one. Here another one. Mm-hmm. All right. Say somebody died. God forbid. Yeah. Always. All right. Your man's. It's your man's. Your man's die. Right. Now, like, is it wrong for, like, you to now push up on this chick? Like, now, <laughs> <laughs> now what's the extent of that and being disrespectful? I mean, my, my bets are off. My dog. No, hey, once you gone, you gone. Oh, yeah, like. bro. My bets are off. Look, she was lonely. My whole, yeah. I came to check on the kids. You know, you know what I'm saying? Hey, my whole thing is, I think I would rather her be in somebody I knew was a real nigga's arms anyway. You know? So, I guess. I'll be in your ear, bro. Go after it. <laughs> Take care I know of the kids, you, too, bro. Right, man. Just just do it, man. She gonna need you to come. Use the kids to get in there, bro. Just go, <laughs> she gonna just go need check you on to comfort her. her. Right. That's it. Just, just say you coming to check on the kids. She, she gonna, oh! Right in your shoulder. Just take her from there. But wait like six months, though. You know what I'm saying? You can, Cause everybody gonna have something to say. Right. We right. all look a little nuts, bro. Like, nah, that's yeah. We pop up the next day. Yeah, I think we're getting married. Whoa, whoa. Hey. Back hey. up. Time out. Right. Quarter on the play. Got me flag on the play. What's going on? Have you um <laughs> spoken to? Cause it's only been six months. <laughs> have you been to the damn grave site? <laughs> Talk to your husband about this. Like, nigga, that's not. He's dead. He, I'm dead. Like what, whoever is dead, you know what I'm saying? Like they are moved on. She should move on. That's kind of weird. <laughs> if you don't think so, I don't know. If you don't think so, comment below. I'ma just tell you you're weird. But not my sister. Don't wait till I'm dead to pop in on my sister though. Fair enough. I mean, family. Because family is family. Like it's kind of like, bro. You you just now getting the goods, bro. You could have came and talked to me, bro. <laughs> But yeah, man, that was it. I was just, I seen some stuff on Twitter, man. Right. No, I mean, conversation is the conversation, man. What do you guys think? Is it right or wrong? Comment below. I might tell you you're weird. Anyway, <laughs> we can continue, though, man, with the discussion that I think is a great one. You want to do or first? Who's, what's our or? You want to do... Migos versus Locks or Migos versus Hot Boys? Oh shit! We got a motherfucking or on our motherfucking hands, ladies and gentlemen. Which one you want to do, Locks or Hot Boys? Oh man! Or you want to rank on one of three, Migo? What you want to do? Talk about clickbait, nigga. Yeah. This is gonna get clicks, nigga. Nobody would think about doing a comparison like this, but it's only fair. Three and three, man. Man, I'm with that. I'm with that. Three and three, bro. It's the locks. It's the locks versus the Migos. So we got to pull them up, man. This is wild. This is about to be nuts. All right, I can The is going to kill us, nigga. Like, we might get destroyed for this. Chic Looch. Jaded Kiss Styles P. I oh. hope we don't get this wrong. <laughs> Whatever the outcome is. Sheik Looch. What you talking about? If it, if, if, Sheik Looch. Ah, oh, shit. Sheik, Sheik Looch versus Takeoff, nigga. Who you got? Go. 
<laughs> and low key when he dropped this album, I kind of fucked with that shit. Around the time when uh, Jada dropped uh, the last kiss, uh-huh. I fucked with that album and shit. It was in the twelfth grade. I was banging that shit, but everywhere we go, people wanna know. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I'm gonna have to go with I'm gonna have to go with Sheik because I fucked with his album more than if you're gonna put him one in, you know what I'm saying I fucked with that one album more than I fucked with take the Takeoff album. album you yeah, know what I'm saying and then, gonna, enough. and then you're gonna put Styles P against Offset oh. or Styles no I'm, I'm putting Wait. Offset against Jada bro oh you wanna put him against each other right now these guys I mean, individually I mean fine let's I'm doing go. it all I'm doing let's it all let's go so so then we have Offset versus Styles P no Offset got? versus Jada bro what? Uh, yes, bro. I feel like Offset is the most lyrical one. He really one. the top dog? I, lyrically, yes. You, I, he, you know what? I think he has shown pro- What do you think, guys? Is motherfucking Offset, Offset really the top dog in the front man in motherfucking I wouldn't group? say it's a front man. I think they all bring something different. No, nah, like man. Offset- we all knew Quavo was the guy. We called Quavo the leader. We been did that. Yeah, but looking at it now, you don't think that, exactly. bro. Like we don't exactly. It's no clear front man, but I Quavo think he made the most of the guy. best songs. Quavo was the right. Correct. The no, I know. I think Offset made most of the best songs. Like, what? Wasn't he the fucking the front guy of, the, of, of Fight Night? Okay, but what about Bad and Bougie? He's done some joints. What about Bad and Bougie? Because Offset was uh, going through legal troubles during that time. Oh, but you see, no. Nah, you see, know what I'm saying? So, but, but see, Offset did give it the, that way. <laughs> Without him, that song ain't really what it's going to be, like, for sure. So, no, nah, they've all the powerhouse group, so I don't know. I guess I'm gonna so. Put, I'm going to put Offset against Jada. I'm going to put Quavo against Styles. Mm. Ooh. Fair enough. Now, I, man. I'm going to go... <laughs> Damn, dog. Fuck. <laughs> I'm going to go Jada over Offset. Mm. Bye, bye here. Bye, Fro. Jada over Offset. Okay. Bye, Fro. <laughs> mm. Damn. And as a rapper, I got to put Styles over Quavo. Mm. But as a... But as a group, I gotta put Migos over the locks, bro. I got, I got to. Oh my god! Together, now, hold on, wait a minute. Now we gotta go through the stats because uh, YouTube says the algorithm to be good has to be at least seven minutes. So we gotta talk for a little bit longer. I'm hit. Nigga, you just get. <laughs> I'm hit. So. Money, power, respect, <laughs> platinum. Oh, uh, obviously they had oh. money, power, respect on it. <laughs> Money, power, respect was on that Nigga, what are you saying? Nigga, we are the streets I don't even remember what was on that What's that? Fourth, third? Well, I don't know Filthy Americans, beautiful Living off experience in 2020 I remember, I remember the Rough Riders out? album Oh, that's coming out I remember the Rough Riders album I remember that That right. was a thing You know what I'm saying? They had mixtapes They had sneak peeks They put out not too long ago You know what I'm saying? If you think I'm jiggy, nigga, we go hip or okay, hip. Okay, ride or die, bitch. <laughs> you are not trying to go hip or hip right now. Yes, dog. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you got to, it's only right, bro. Hip or hip, nigga. Let's On the Wake and Bake podcast, bro. <laughs> On the Wake and Bake podcast, nigga. Only us. Only us. Versace. <laughs> Hannah Montana. Control left, bro. Control left. Control left. Just can press control left, bro. Control left, bro. (laughs) Press control left. (laughs) He's gonna put them side by side. Alright, windows left. Money, power, respect versus Versace. Money, power, respect wins. Mm, money, power, respect gotta be Versace, dog. Especially the original. I think. Uh, other than that, dog, uh, I think it's a white. <laughs> <laughs> it's a white. 
They don't have nothing messing with bad and bougie. Holy shit. Even culturally. That is like a cultural song, bro. It's on culture. <laughs> Holy shit. Handsome and wealthy. Night night. <laughs> like Panama, and they did have Canada. like a cold streak. That niggas created the dab, they <laughs> say. You know what I'm saying? The locks didn't create a dance. And then go down some more, because after Bad and Bougie, they got some more. Okay, t shirt. All right, you probably Slippery, put some. man. I was banging uh-huh. that. Uh huh. Motorsport. Come on. Only saw the Nicky party we going to get. Stir Fry. No, Stir Fry. I can beat that. The locks can beat Stir Fry. Walk it, talk it, nigga. Come pure on. Pure water. Man. They can't beat pure water. Mm-hmm. They can't touch pure water. Need it. They probably can. They can beat it. everything after stripper ball. <laughs> <laughs> With no contest, nigga. Everything got the strip ball, nigga. No contest, nigga. It's a go. But boy, look at this shit. <laughs> That's feature Even artists. Features. Nah, the feature artists. It's like go to their features. Go to Locks features. Oh, they ain't got a lot. All about the Benjamins, yeah. nigga. Fuck that, nigga. Let's yeah, go. They got but the that's their only two two wins. They got two guaranteed wins. I think money, that money, power, respect can probably beat anything they got except bad and, and the song with Eve probably can beat some. Maybe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but oh, that's, that's it. it. <laughs> Me oh my win. god, dog! It's like almost a no contest, dog. Niggas gonna be sick. As so rappers, they win like, though. As rappers, the locks here. win. Individual rap rapping, I feel like they win. But as a group, man, it's just it ain't fair, dog. I'm sorry, and I'm a '90s baby. I'm sorry. This is unbelievable. It's like, unbelievable. Does the locks even have a classic? I I don't think they have a certified. The first classic, album, bro. Money, Power, Respect, is that a questionable classic? It might be questionable. We might can go into that one day, but I don't think it is classic. Nah. Well, music gave it a three, nigga. It's got an A minus for Entertainment Weekly, so it might have been good, nigga. But it wasn't classic. We gotta go no back way. through that. We, gotta we go have to, that. man. But what do you guys think, man? Was Money Power Respect the classic? What kind of classics do the locks actually have? And what classics though do the Migos got though? No label tell two. Tell me about that. Oh no. shit. <laughs> no label two. Shit. It's <laughs> trying to stump you. That's a mixtape though. That's all. It still counts, man. Release. They had a release that was classic. Fight night, handsome and wealthy. Come on, oh, man. Freak no more. Come on. Oh Keep man. Going this, man. Emmett Smith. Oh, Payola. This is. <laughs> no label too, bro. You have a point, bro. You got a real point. So they definitely and, have and a culture point. is a questionable. Culture is questionable. I I I don't believe it is. Uh, as of today, it might change. Maybe I don't know. But I don't think it is right now. But it, once again, it's very questionable. Definitely holds some weight. Um, in a few years for uh, Is It A Classic? You know what I'm saying? If y'all haven't seen Is It A Classic? It is a podcast we originally did. We're going to incorporate with all of the clips from Wake and Bake Podcast. We're going to re-release those on the Facebook page, man. So if y'all are on the Facebook page, make sure y'all go like that. Subscribe over there. This is the Wake